I've often heard the sentiment that the sequel sucks or it's never gonna be a it's never gonna be as good as the original. Especially in relation to films, I feel like some people are like, ooh, oversaturation. But this got me wondering if it's similar in the bookish realm. Are sequels significantly inferior to the first book? Especially considering that this past year, a very highly anticipated sequel was released and it was highly disappointing to many people. I'm talking about Iron Flame here, people. There are many people that loved and adored Fourth Wing last year, yet when the release of Iron Flame came out, I saw many people commenting that they did not enjoy it. I just bring up Fourth Wing and Iron Flame as an example. I will not be reading those. I could, I could put them in the thumbnail and then maybe I'll get Lots of clicks. I did some Googling and found some interesting theories and insights and one commenter even quoting Brandon Sanderson who writes fantastic series long novels that are like all contained in the same universe saying oversaturation doesn't really work here because his novels are beloved. So ultimately I decided to put my very biased opinion to the test by reading two sequels of two of my favorite books from last year. Hey y'all, I'm Jess and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hello, subscribe, subliminal, subscribe, subliminal subscribe, subscribe. messaging, subscribe. algorithm, YouTube, AI, put my videos out to people that wanna see them. So my TBR for this video is going to be Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones. This is the sequel to my heart is a chainsaw. This book introduces us to Jade Daniels and this book picks up four years after the events of this book. My second book is going to be Everyone on This Train is a Suspect by Benjamin Stevenson. This is a sequel to Everyone on My Fuck Fam. <laughs> Everyone in my family has killed someone, which was my favorite book of 2023. Now with these books being sequels, I will try as hard as possible not to spoil anything that happens in the first book. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll the footage and get into the video. I am currently reading Everyone on This Train is a Suspect because, you know, this the theme of this vlog is sequels. I'm really liking it. I did not check in sooner because I was on vacation. So like the first half of this book I read on our road trip back home from Austin. We drove at nighttime because we prefer driving during the night. So I got lots of footage of these like small Texas towns at nighttime. Not creepy at all. So I was listening to everyone on this train as a suspect. I was a little bit worried because you know sequels, it's hard to like rekindle the magic, but it's there. I'm really loving this. I took some notes because I couldn't really update in the car. So in this book, Ernest and are together. Love that for them. And they both wrote a book about the events that happened in the first book. Both authors now, true crime authors if you will book did really great as well but at, on this journey Ernest is the guest for a author retreat on this uh train that travels in Australia I think the train makes stops and they can get off anyways so they go to this author event on a train there's some a few weird things that happen like some uncomfortable questions during like the question and answer portion there's also one person on the train who is like really obsessed with this other author that was invited and she carries around a copy of stephen king's misery so yeah so that author that she's a huge fan of ends up like He's dead. Of course, she's a suspect because Kathy Bates. There was some stuff going on because like on the train you have the authors, but you also have like the publicists and stuff and like uh, his agent being like, you can't kill off a character or something like that. The, the writing style is still in that meta format where Ernest is talking to us and being like, I'm having writer's block because it seems like I can only write a good book whenever someone dies in real life. And I don't want that to happen, but luckily it does. And Ernest also touches on the fact that this is a sequel, but it would be too convenient if all of my family members were on this train together and another murder happened. Like that would just be too suspicious. So of course, you know, that's his way of telling us these are all new characters in this book, except for him and so yeah, that brings us to now around the halfway point where this author has been murdered. And of course there's the other authors that look suspicious and the guests that are there as fans. I am going to finish that up. 
today, probably, because it's due tomorrow. I only have the audiobook, but that's okay. This is like such an easy audiobook to follow. I don't know if I'm going to buy these books. Like, I think that I, if I do, I'm going to get the UK paperbacks because I don't really like the hardcover options. They don't match. I don't know. I don't know why I'm bitching about this because I do want to own some of my favorite books, but not if they're uggos. Not if they're uggos. I'm not picking them up. I am going to get ready because I'm going to run by the library and the used bookstore. My mic is actually in the sink, so I had to go wet my beauty blender in the bathtub. This is a mess. Okay, so I have finished Everybody in My Family Has Killed Someone. F me! I have finished the second book that is called Everyone on This Train is a Suspect. The last time I checked in was about the 50% mark, and I meant to check in before I finished it, but I just kind of flew right through it. I've kind of sat on it and thought about it, and my gut reaction was to give it a 4.5. That's still what I feel like giving this book, is a 4.5. I don't think it'll be on my favorites of the year list. That depends on how good my reading year is for the rest of the year, which in my March wrap up, I intend on giving updates about what my favorites are so far this year. And I will say that when it comes to everyone in, on this train as a suspect, trigger warning for rape. I don't want to give anything away, so spoilers a little bit, but I am not going to talk about who and what is happening. I'm just going to say there is a child born from this rape. I think it was handled well. If you need trigger warnings, do not feel like bad about that because trigger warnings are so specific to individuals and I would not blame anyone at all for not wanting to read this book because of that trigger warning. Okay, so now that we're out of that trigger warning spoiler, I got too much liquid blush. I don't want to wipe it off because I, this is, I hate wasting stuff. Okay, that kind of tones it down a bit. This is what I get for trying to do two things at once. Talk about a book and put on makeup. Oh my god, Jordaline, whenever, I can't remember what video I just watched of hers, but she like, oh, the red and the gloss on, honestly, Jordaline's makeup is the best. I'm glad that this clip has been eight minutes long and I have talked almost zero about the book. And my intention, at, as of right now, is to read it again before the end of the year, because I think that reading it a second time and seeing all the clues that Benjamin has left for us and see if it's, you know, gonna make it on my favorites list, but right now it just doesn't feel that way. But there was a lot of cute Easter eggs within this book, especially concerning Agatha Christie's um, train book. I can't remember what it is. What is that book called? Orient Express, Murder on the Orient Express. And there was like Easter eggs and nods to that book that I really appreciated, Benji. The experiment of this video is to read sequels and see if they are just as good, or if I love them just as much, or if they suck, and it definitely doesn't suck. I loved it. I can see why some people might not love this series, and I would read from this series again, but I don't feel like it can go on forever. I, I don't know. Maybe it can though. Like, I can suspend my disbelief enough for Jessica Fletcher to solve 12 seasons of murder cases. So I'm sure I could have Ernest stumble upon a dead body multiple times and be okay with it. Look, if you loved the first book, read this one. Determine for yourself because I could see how this meta narrative could kind of be a one-off and like lose its magic in the second one. But if you're a fan of like Agatha Christie, um, the meta straight to reader communication of the narrator, and uh, just like some silly antics, then you'd probably love the Ernest Cunningham series. I already started Don't Fear the Reaper. I am 
about this far in. I started it this morning and I forgot that I kept this little uh, bookmark thing for my friend Shelby. And isn't that just so cute? At the end of My Heart is a Chainsaw, to be as vague as possible, I will say a lot of people died. Jade is kind of being blamed for some of the destruction and stuff that happened during this huge massacre. At the beginning of this book, she's going through a trial. Actually, there's some other things that happen, but like, I don't even know how to talk about this book. How do you talk about sequels? I'm listening to the book on my phone and following along with the book. That was how I read My Heart is a Chainsaw. Now I will say, whenever I was Googling about sequels and like trying to figure out like, why do people not like sequels as much, especially in movies? One thing that I came across in relation to books and trilogies especially is that the three books follow like a three act setup. So the second book in a trilogy is usually the book that is most disliked because it has so much darkness and sort of like uh, no resolution at the end because the third book is gonna pick it up and resolve everything. So I'm curious about that because book one was really dark. Right now Jade having to relive that during her court hearings and stuff and Jade has decided in this book to stop going by the name Jade and go by her um, government name of Jennifer. In any other book would probably be confusing, but I think that a few times in My Heart is a Chainsaw, they've, you know, that was referenced. And then now, anytime someone says Jade, she's like, no, I'm Jennifer now. Look, I'm only this far in and I'm already really loving it. I don't know if it could exactly hit me the way that My Heart is a Chainsaw did, but I'm enjoying this story, this narrative, this creepiness of Hook Hand. We all know about the legend of Hook Hand who would go to Lover's Lane and like kill the non-virgin children up there. I Supernatural did an episode about it and stuff. Anyways, there's a serial killer in this book with a hook hand. Okay. But his motives for being a serial killer and like having a certain number of body counts that he wants to get to, that's fucking wild. I think I love this cover even more than um, My Heart is a Chainsaw. So let's get into this. I'm not gonna have a lot of footage or B-roll of me reading because I'm using my phone to read and, and film. I could give you a reenactment right now. This So for the next couple of hours, this is what I'm gonna be sitting here looking like. Actually, where's my glasses? I don't know, so I'll just pretend. We're pretending anyways. <music> Kinda like that. I can't hear <laughs> with these headphones on. I can't hear myself think. That's what I'm gonna be doing, so picture that. Picture me doing that for the next two hours because the used bookstore in my town does not open until noon, so. I will be hitting that up because I'm looking for a very specific book. So for B-roll, instead of me sitting here reading and you watching me, we're gonna go to the bookstore together. So roll the clip. So I could not find the dry shampoo, so I'm wearing this hat, but I even might take it off because that's just gonna make it look worse. I don't know. Okay, I know I said like roll the clips of me at the bookstore, but it hasn't opened yet and I'm ready to go. So far in Don't Fear the Reaper, we have kind of revisited older characters from the first book, but we're also introducing some of the new characters that are in the high school, sort of the same age that Jade and Letha were, or Jennifer and Letha were whenever the first book took place. All right, I've returned my library book. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my audiobook back on. My prediction of why these kids are introduced into the story is coming true. <laughs> okay, so I am at the bookstore. I forgot to mention, so in My Heart is a Chainsaw book one, the chapters are kind of split with Jade's um, essays about like slasher movies and stuff. 
Whereas this book, it, the chapters are broken up with a sort of like thesis statement about this serial killer that is in the book. And I know that they mentioned who wrote them because the person has uh, information about Jade, her trial, and that's kind of how we get a rundown on like what Jade's been through the past couple of years. I'm gonna go in the bookstore. There are a couple of books that I am looking for specifically. Girl, I was walking to go to Jacqueline Susan and I see a little bit of pink down here. Oh, oh, what do we have? Boom. There you go, bitch. Oh, Good afternoon to you. Well, despite the fact that temperatures today are far higher than they've been for some considerable time in many parts of the country, we're certainly not out of the woods yet. It does look as if very gradually in the next day or so it's going to turn cold again. And indeed, bad news, I'm afraid. Heard you walking around Hempstead Heath Well, I was out in Camden Town You got your life all playing You got yourself some new friends Heard they ain't that kind So I just pretend As I leave this place again That this just wasn't our time When our friends talk about you It's hard to drown them out Cause borrowing your dreams Has left me lonely now and I lost a part of myself that's begging to be found So I say thank you for the Sunday paper I step outside, take the news and go back in Let's take off the makeup because I have been out sweating But it was so worth it because I got a lot of great books while I was out I was thinking about going to Barnes & Noble but I actually found a lot of good books <laughs> I actually found a lot of good books at the used bookstore, which does not always happen. I am about halfway through Don't Fear the Reaper. I was listening to the audiobook while I was out and about, and I found my spot in the physical book because I'm gonna get right back to it. I'm liking seeing Jennifer and Letha. Like, there's a time jump, so you get to see them. You get told, like, hey, this is what's been going on the past couple of years, but you also get to follow along with what's going on right now in Proof Rock, Idaho. There has been some creepy moments in this book. I can't remember with the first book, just because it feels like so long since I read it, but it was just last year. I'm going to finish this up. I wish this had a table of contents, just because it would be cool to see every title chapter, or every chapter title listed since they are all slasher movies. We've got Black Christmas, Friday the 13th, The Burning, Happy Death Day, It Follows. Okay, I am almost finished with Don't Fear the Reaper. It is not gonna be a five star. I was losing interest a bit. Okay, this is not me saying that I don't like it. It's just there's certain chapters involving new characters who are the same age um, that Jade was in the first book. Now, I get that it's a necessary evil. Not necessary evil. What's the word? I don't know. But that it, you have to introduce new characters so that you can kill pe people off. Like, you, so you don't kill off the main characters or whatever. It's giving me the vibe, not plot-wise, but just... Okay, this is so niche. And some people might see this, like, comparison as offensive. But it's giving me the vibes of the very last season of Pretty Little Liars where they bring in the new high school kids. Because Allison and Emily are teachers at Rosewood High, so they have like the new Allison and her posse, which includes a little baby Sydney Sweeney. Did anybody know that Sydney Sweeney was in PLL? Because I didn't until I knew who Sydney Sweeney was. I mean, I knew these characters that they introduced. Okay, we're not talking about Pretty Little Liars here. In the very last season of Pretty Little Liars, the liars are grown up in their early 20s now. They cross paths with children that were their age when they started the series, and it's kind of like showing the cycle of like, something's never change and blah, 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 blah. 
And in this, Letha and Stephanie, what? Letha and Jennifer slash Jade are in their early 20s. They've gone through this stuff. I think they'd be 21. I don't know. Letha's, I think it's, I don't know if it's her half sisters or stepsisters. They're twins. They were in the first book, but it's kind of like their friend group from high school. But every time it talked about them, I just kind of found myself losing interest. So I have to be honest with myself and say, this is not a five star. I haven't finished it yet. I'm in the midst of some pretty gruesome shit going down. Some batshit crazy descriptions of dead bodies. I'll just say that. So I only have about an hour left in the audiobook, so I'm going to wrap that up and then give my complete final thoughts. I'm still in the same spot. I finished Don't Fear the Reaper, and I'm going to give it four stars. That is what I'm feeling. This is not a five star for me. My, my interest ebbed and flowed depending on, you know, who was the main focus. I will not say that this is, this sucks in comparison to My Heart is a Chainsaw. We are still getting to hang out with these characters and they are the main characters. They're the main focus. I just didn't really connect with or care about the newer characters that were introduced. Other than that, plot wise, horror wise, it was really great. This book introduces a serial killer, but is he a serial killer or is he a slasher? Like one of these ethereal beings, is that the right word? I don't know. These beings that are, are not killed by guns and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And where I think it's, you know, different and darker, like I was saying, is the the body count and how throughout the whole story, we are getting maimed and dead bodies presented to us <laughs> throughout. There are great twists and Jade kind of has to figure out what the hell's going on in Proof Rock. This is a fantastic continuation in the Indian Lake trilogy and it has me super pumped for the new book that will come out very soon, I believe in April. I literally just did that video last week and I cannot remember what I what what day comes out. So if you want to know when the Angel of Indian Lake is coming out, uh, watch my new releases video. I don't know why I still have those on. For me personally, both of these sequels held up great. They, of course, were never going to be better than two of my favorite books of 2023, but they were still really good stories and they stood well on their own you know, as as novels with these with these characters that we get to revisit. And so maybe I'm a little bit biased since the original books were some of my favorites. Of course I'm gonna love the sequel. Not necessarily, but it was a high probability. So let me know if you have read Don't Fear the Reaper or Everyone on This Train is a Suspect or the originals, My Heart's a Chainsaw and everyone in my family has killed someone. If you've read them, tell me what you think about them in the comments or message me on Instagram. We could talk there too, boo. So let's wrap things up here and I will see you next Saturday.